to Abney fans. Here I am both on Instagram and on Facebook. And I'm a couple minutes late. I do apologize for that. I was planning on jumping on at 1030. But I got distracted looking for this particular study, which I will tell you about later. Um, you can find this study by going to uh, going to Facebook business page, facebook.com slash somatic anatomy. And you can find this on the business page. I'll have the links up there. There's one link that's already up there, but there'll be more links by the time I am done with this. Okay. So, hi, I'm Lissa Mahalik. I teach and I teach movement teachers how to use anatomy within the context of actual movement of the actual human body. I also do movement based pain relief, both live and online, using the power of anatomy for good. Today, we are going to talk about some really cool stuff that I came across while I was working on a class, you know, an anatomy class for professionals. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit of that with you guys right here, right now for free awesomeness because, hey, we're a community here, right? We, should, we need to do this properly. So um, serratus muscle, we all know the serratus anterior, you know, the... Bruce Lee muscle, and you see his little zigzag down here. Those aren't his ribs. Those are the that that is the edge of his serratus muscle. Now, my lovely assistant here, Napoleon Bony Parts, is going to show off get this pet muscle off here. Here is the serratus anterior. So this is the one we're all familiar with. Goes on the underside of the medial, medial towards midline, border of the scapula. Too much duct tape comes underneath the scapula, helps to stabilize and mobilize the scapula at the same time. You see it a lot on martial artists and boxers because it does this protraction of the scapula. Best way to find it, do a push-up position without bending your elbows. Keep doing this. You'll, if you have a weak serratus, you'll find it really, really fast. But that's serratus anterior. When we have serratus posterior, we got two, serratus posterior superior, serratus posterior inferior. So serratus, like serrated edge of a knife, posterior, because it's on the posterior side of your body, and superior, inferior, superior is closer to the head, inferior is closer to the ground, because anatomical directions, that's how it goes. So here's the thing. Up until very recently, every damn thing I saw about the serratus posterior was accessory breathing muscle. We don't know. It's accessory breathing muscle. It's this small, weenie-ass muscle. It probably helps to expand the rib cage by pulling on the rib cage in relation to the spine, which, okay, you can see how that goes. You've got like C7, C7, T1, 2, and 3 here. And here from your second, third, fourth, and fifth ribs up at the top. Down here, we've got T11, 12, L1, and L2, and ribs 9, 10, 11, and 12 down here. So, you know, that kind of makes sense that, all right, what would it do? It would expand the rib cage. What does the expansion of the rib cage do? You breathe. Awesome, super cool. However, Recently, I mean, now recently being like 2008, actually not that recent, it might even be 2001. I will check, I will get these studies to you, I will be posting them on the Facebook business page so y'all can find these. Uh, a couple of interesting things showed up. One, there's this Valensky study, that's the link that's up there currently, um, off ResearchGate, that says that according to what they've been finding, there's actually no electromyographic evidence that these buggers have anything to do with respiration. There was a really interesting cadaver study in which people went in and looked at cadavers um, with COPD, with, with like genuine breathing issues, like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which means that they're not breathing properly. So you'd expect the muscles of breathing would look different in these people than it would in people who are breathing normally. Muscles of breathing like the serratus posterior, right? Well, what these guys found when they went into the cadaver, getting through the muscles, getting through the fascia, finding the serratus posterior, superior and inferior, 
what they found was pretty much the same damn serratus posterior that they had on healthy cadavers. Okay, maybe it doesn't have a respiratory function. Similarly, electromyographic studies have shown that these guys don't activate. So the cool thing about this research gate study with Valensky et al is that they are hypothesizing that this in fact is a is a muscle of proprioception. So there, there's there's a little there's a little debate about that because that's what science is all about. You have an idea, you test it, you argue about it, eventually you figure it out. But it looks like these guys might have a proprioceptive function because they can certainly tell where your head is and they can tell where your spine is. So this goes, this actually, this gets me excited because I do movement based postural readjustment for pain relief, which is a big fucking mouthful, pardon me, but basically means that if you are using your body right, it shouldn't hurt which means that you can learn how to use your body right and it will stop hurting, which means that if these guys actually have a proprioceptive function telling your body where it is in space, then the better your spine is organized, the better these guys can do their job, and the better your body can stay in good positions once you get there. So I got super excited about this and I hope that you guys are super excited about it. Hey guys, I hope you guys are super excited about this too. If you are just joining on, I'm so sorry because I'm actually just about closing this off. So, hey, replays are your friend. I am going to post the studies for the, you know, that are hypothesizing about the proprioceptive functions of these guys. I'm going to post the study about the COPD cadaver studies that say, hey, if these are actually respiratory muscles and they should look different in people with COPD than they should in people without COPD. Well, guess what? They don't. So it's not exactly discovering a new muscle, but it is discovering new uses for old muscles, or it's actually discovering the actual use for actual muscles that we actually have. So if you like going into the studies, check it out on the Facebook page. If you don't like going into studies, you can take my word for it. Psst, don't take the word of some rando on the internet. At least go and click through with the studies, okay? And the most important thing is enjoy your anatomy. Check back. We'll keep popping up cool things every week or so. Well, we'll keep popping up cool things fairly often. But again, I'm Lissa Mahalik. This is my lovely assistant, Napoleon Boney Parts. Yes, I love you too, Boney. And we are Somatic Anatomy. Enjoy your anatomy. And we'll see you guys on and offline. <laughs>